The Book of the Damned, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 5b. I have tabulated all the data of this book, and a great deal besides, card system, and several proximities, thus emphasized, have been revelations to me. Nevertheless, it is only the method of theologians and scientists, worst of all, of statisticians. For instance, by the statistic method, I could prove that a black rain had fallen regularly, every seven months, somewhere upon this earth. To do this, I'd have to include red rains and yellow rains, but, conventionally, I'd pick out the black particles in red substances and in yellow substances, and disregard the rest. Then, too, if here and there, a black rain should be a week early or a month late, that would be acceleration, or retardation. This is supposed to be legitimate in working out the periodicities of comets. If black rains, or red or yellow rains with black particles in them, should not appear at all near some dates, we have not read Darwin in vain, the records are not complete. As to other, interfering black rains, they'd be either grey or brown, or for them we'd find other periodicities. Still, I have had to notice the year 1819, for instance. I shall not note them all in this book, but I have records of 31 extraordinary events in 1883. Someone should write a book upon the phenomena of this one year, that is, if books should be written, 1849 is notable for extraordinary falls, so far apart that a local explanation seems inadequate, not only the black rain of Ireland, May, 1849, but a red rain in Sicily and a red rain in Wales. Also, it is said, Tim's Year Book, 1850, page 241, that, upon April 18th or 20th, 1849, shepherds near Mount Roweret found a substance that was not indigenous, upon areas measuring 5 to 10 miles in circumference. Presumably it had fallen there. We have already gone into the subject of science and its attempted positiveness, and its resistance is in that it must have relations of service. It is very easy to see that most of the theoretic science of the 19th century was only a relation of reaction against theologic dogma, and has no more to do with truth than has a wave that bounds back from a shore. Or, if a shop girl, or you or I, should pull out a piece of chewing gum about a yard long, that would be quite as scientific a performance as was the stretching of this earth's age several hundred million of years. All things are not things, but only relations, or expressions of relations. But all relations are striving to be unrelated, or have surrendered to, and subordinated to, higher attempts. So there is a positivist aspect to this reaction that is itself only a relation, and that is the attempt to assimilate all phenomena under the materialist explanation, or to formulate a final, all-inclusive system, upon the materialist basis. If this attempt could be realized, that would be the attaining of realness, but this attempt can be made only by disregarding psychic phenomena, for instance, or, if science shall eventually give in to the psychic, it would be no more legitimate to explain the immaterial in terms of the material, than to explain the material in terms of the immaterial. Our own acceptance is that material and immaterial are the oneness, merging, for instance, in the thought that is continuous with a physical action. That oneness cannot be explained, because the process of explaining is the interpreting of something in terms of something else. All explanation is assimilation of something in terms of something else that has been taken as a basis. But, in continuity, there is nothing that is any more basic than anything else, unless we think that delusion built upon delusion is less real than its pseudo-foundation.